Hello student, uh, in the last lecture of this uh, unit number one, that is called study of different types of logical family. In the previous video, we already defined what is exactly meaning of your uh, logic family. Then we have defined different types of parameter that is called fan in, fan out, propagation delay, figure of merit, then uh, power dissipation, then a uh, voltage and the current parameter, the noise immunity, all these parameters we already defined in the previous uh, video. Then apart from that case, we already discussed how to design two input TTL NAND gate. That means how to design IC74 LS00. Okay, so for designing of your two input TTL NAND gate, there are total three output configurations are there. One is called totem pole output configuration, second is nothing but open collector, and third one is nothing but a TSL, that is called tri-state logic family, tri-state logic. So these are the output configuration. Then we are already compare what is exactly meaning of your totem pole output configuration, what are the major advantage, what are the major limitations, how this is avoided or overcome in case of your open collector. Then, <clears throat> as uh, in, the, in the previous video, we have already defined that there are two types of uh, ICs that is called TTL and CMOS. So whenever I'm going to call IC7400, that is called, this is standard TTL. Standard TTL means what? This is only 7400. While standard CMOS is nothing but a 400 series. Okay, that is called 400 series is applicable for standard CMOS. Now, in your practical, you have already uh, used all the typical ICs that is called 74 LS series. That is called the LS series. LS stands for low power short key. Okay, so what is the exactly meaning of your short key transistor? So short key transistor is basically, uh, basically uh, one transistor uh, which can be able to obtain by connecting one short key diode between the base and the collector. So as uh, everybody knows, transistor can be obtained by using two PN junction diode back to back, same thing. So in this case, uh, one short key diode, short key diode is connected between the base and the collector of the particular BJT. So that transistor will be get converted in terms of your short key transistor. So short key transistor and a normal BGT transistor. Again, the short key transistor has a three basic um, uh, terminals that is called a base collector and the emitter. But the basic difference between normal BGT and a short key transistor that is called uh, uh, is in case of normal BGT, your cutting voltage is nothing but a 0.7. While in case of short key transistor, your cutting voltage is nothing but a 0.2. As the cutting voltage is very less as compared to 0.7, so speed of operation of the particular short key transistor is very high because cutting voltage is very less. That is called 0.2 or 0.3, 0.2 or 0.3, depending upon the, which type of material they are going to use for the construction of short key transistor. Okay, so we will discuss short key transistor. What is the exactly meaning of your short key transistor? That means this is applicable for 74 LS. That is called 74 LS 00, 74 LS 32, 74 LS 86, 74 LS 04. All these are the low power short key uh, transistor. Okay. So look here, this is nothing but the normal uh, short key transistor where this is a base, this is a collector, this is an emitter. So this is nothing but the basically, this is nothing but the short key. We consider. So this is nothing but the basically called short key diode where this short key diode is exactly identical with respect to pn junction diode again this is anode this is cathode so basic difference between this pn junction diode and the short key diode is that the cutting voltage of this short key diode is nothing but a point two, while the cutting voltage of the particular pn junction diode normal pn junction diode is nothing but the point 0.7 so this diode you are going to connect with respect to the base and the collector of the normal transistor that is called bgd so this transistor is get converted in terms of your normal short key transistor. So this is called short key transistor. Okay. So cutting voltage of this short key transistor is very less. That is called 0.2 volts as compared to normal BJT. Okay. So 740 series evaluation. As I said earlier, standard uh, TTL is always start from 7400 series. In this case, there is no basically any sub logic families are come to the picture. The first 74 series that is called TTL family come to the picture with respect to the 74 series. So the construction of this 74 series is uh, can be obtained by using simple BJT that is called a transistor, BJT transistor. But bipolar transistor, where transistor is always goes through the saturation, practically absolute 
don't use in a new design. So as I said earlier, this 74 series, this is the initial one, the first transistor or first IC design is for the 74 series. So this IC has a major limitation. Why? Because this is a standard detail where transistor always goes into saturation. So it consists of a number of um, limitations. Then this is 74S, S4 short key. Okay, so this is called bipolar transistor is deep saturation prevented by uh, short key diode. And this uh, basically many times this is used. Then this is called 74 LS series. That, that is called 74 LS series. 74 is uh, TTL and LS stand for low power short key. Okay, so in this case, this is the first one major limitation. That limitation they are going to define with respect to this 74S. This is called 74 LS, that is called low power short key. This is called advanced short key, advanced short key. This is called advanced low power short key. And this is called 74 F, that is called the fastest one. Okay, 74 F is the fastest one. Okay. okay. So transistor, transistor logic. So initially 74 series standard detail, then standard detail major major limitation is nothing but the power dissipation is very high. So my aim is that I want to avoid that power dissipation. That's why the new sublogic families come to the picture. That is nothing but the 74L. L means what? Low power. 74H high speed. 74S that is called short key. 74 LS low power short key. This all these 74 LS series we are using in our practical. All the practicals you are going to perform on the 74 LS series. So always keep in mind this 74 LS series is nothing but the TTL. This is the type of this IC is nothing but a TTL, and this is a low power short key. Then 74 AS that is called advanced short key. This is 74 ALS advanced low power short key. These are the sublogic families of the particular TTL. The typical TTL series characteristics. So these are the different comparison of different standard uh, sublogic families of the particular TTL. As I said earlier, so this is called 74A standard TTL. Standard, this is short key, low power short key, advanced short key. Then this is nothing but advanced low power short key and this is the fastest one. Normally, all these sublogic families are applicable depending upon which type of application you are going to use. Normally, for education purpose, you are always used for the 74 LS series. Now, for in some cases, we require only the fastest operation of the particular IC. So that is for military application or any other application or industry application. Suppose this is 74F. Suppose I will call 74F00. So this is again called to input NAND gate. So this is the operation of the uh, speed of operation of the particular IC is very fast as compared to remaining one because this is application. They don't bother about the power distribution. They require only speed. That's why it's called 74 F. Okay. So these are the comparison with respect to different parameters that is called the propagation delay in terms of nanosecond, power dissipation in terms of milliwatt, maximum clock rate in terms of megahertz, fan out of the particular series. This is 74 to 74 F. Okay. So this is called standard TTL. Nobody use right now. This is for your education purpose. This is for your always for your industry purpose. Otherwise, I will call this is a military application. So this is with respect to different voltage parameter of the particular this. Uh, ICs in terms of TTL. Comparison of logic families. So what is exactly different between the TTL and CMOS? So in the first video, we already defined four to five comparison of TTL and the CMOS. The first important comparison is nothing but a TTL. In case of TTL, we are going to use a BGT. While in case of CMOS, we are going to use FAT that is called a MOSFET or FAT. So one is called bipolar, second is called unipolar. Then depending upon the bipolar and the unipolar, I can able to define the speed. So TTL is faster because BGT is used, CMOS is slower one. Then second important parameter of the particular comparison is nothing but a power dissipation. So CMOS consists of very less power dissipation as compared to your TTL because CMOS consists of your MOSFET. So this is very important characteristics of the particular TTL and CMOS. Okay, this we already defined. Then we already defined some important parameter of the particular fan out. So fan out of the particular TTL is nothing but a 10, while the fan out of the CMOS, we already defined that can be 50 or 100 because the current handling capacity or output ca output capacity, uh, handling capacity of the CMOS or MOSFET is very high as compared to your TTL. So fan out of the particular CMOS is very high. That is as compared to TTL. 
apart from that case there is a major important difference between cmos and the ttl that means the static property of cmos okay then what is the exactly meaning of your static property of the cmos you might be study in case of your adc or a mosfet so this cmos consist of or mosfet consist of one major limitation that is called a static property what is static property suppose i will i will take two import two ics what is called 7400 and second one i will call 4000 What is seven four zero zero? Seven four zero zero. I will consider this is called seven four zero zero. Okay, so this seven four zero zero is nothing but a standard detail. At the same time, suppose I will call this is a four zero zero zero. Okay, so this four zero 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 I will call as a standard CMOS. Okay, because in this case there is no sub logic family's computer picture. Then as per the concept of the static property. Suppose I will consider these two IC and I will make the connection on the practical board. So this 400 series because the construction can be implemented by using the simple MOSFET. So I cannot directly touch to this IC. Okay, if I directly touch to the IC, what will happen? The basically every human has his own static uh, static current which is available in 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 his body. The current which is uh, already present in the human body that flows to the particular IC. Okay, and if this current goes on excessive, that means within a fraction of second, that IC can be damaged. Okay, so this is called a static property, a static current. Okay, everybody knows if you are uh, just uh, sitting on the plastic chair and if you are going to touch to anybody, so it gives uh, some current flowing through your body. That current is basically called a static current. Okay, same principle is applicable with respect to your seven four zero zero series. That is called a static property. So within a fraction of second, such IC that is called four zero zero IC will be get damaged due to the excessive static current. Okay, so this is the major limitations of the particular CMOS. So what are the characteristics of uh, CMOS? CMOS has a major limitation speed of operation. The second major limitation is nothing but the static property. But major advantage is nothing but the very less power dissipation. Okay, that's why CMOS is used everywhere in the particular market. So this is called TTL and uh, TTL and CMOS. So this is with respect to comparison power dissipation, which I I also discuss power dissipation in case of CMOS is very less. Then proportion delay time, maximum clock frequency, speed product product. This is the thing, but a figure of merit. So all these parameters we can able to compare with respect to standard TTL and standard CMOS. Okay, but in this case, this is CMOS seven four SC high speed CMOS seven four zero zero standard TTL standard CMOS. TTLs. These are the different standard uh, sub logic families of the particular TTL. Okay, so everybody knows TTL stand for transistor transistor logic and MOSFET means what? The you know, CMOS means what? Complementary metal oxide semiconductor. But CMOS can be constructed by using PMOS and NMOS. That is called P channel transistor and the N channel transistor. These are the characteristics of TTL and CMOS. So CMOS sub logic families. Okay, as I said earlier, your standard CMOS logic families always start from four zero zero series. Okay, now in this case, suppose I want to compensate the major limitations of the CMOS that is called the speed. Okay, so I will uh, superimpose or interface with respect to TTL that can be able to generate a new product, and the new product I will always mention by using the seven four series. So this is called seven four C. That is called TTL compatible SC high speed CMOS, then ACT that is called advanced uh, advanced uh, CMOS uh, interfacing, and this is called SCT seven for SCT. So all these are basically called as a sub logic families of the particular CMOS. Now seven for C that is called the seven uh, uh, seven for C that is called TTL compatible high speed CMOS. Why it is called high speed CMOS seven for SC? Because seven four zero 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 has a major limitation, standard CMOS that is called speed of operation. So in this case, they are going to design with respect to seven four SC. That is nothing but the high speed CMOS. In this case, their speed of the uh, operation will get increased as compared to this one. Then this is called SCT seven four SCT seven four SCT means what? High speed TTL CMOS interface. Okay. So in the figure of merit. We already defined your power dissipation and the speed uh, proportion delay. That is called the speed of operation are always inversely proportional. Okay, so due to that case, according to that, this is high speed. So in this case, less power dissipation. High speed TTL CMOS interfacing 
the speed of operation will be very high as compared to this one but the power dissipation will be more as compared to this one so these two parameters are inversely proportional that is called a figure of merit so how to design basically a cmos logic gate that is called cmos inverter two input cmos nand gate two input cmos nor gate for cmos it is a combination of your nmos and pmos okay either these two transistor that is called the pmos transistor and the nmos transistor i want to connect in a series otherwise i will connect in a parallel position to design a two input cmos nand gate or nor gate or cmos inverter okay so this is basically called the uh, p type uh, pmos this is called nmos okay this is called pull up network this is called a pull down network so this is a symbol of the particular nmos i will not go in detail because you already study in case of your edc or a, a transistor that is called fet or mosfet so this is a symbol of your nmos this is a symbol of your pmos so nmos transistor okay this is a symbol then it required voltage control register vgs so this is called vgs then register increases vgs decreases the rds where this is the similar drain to source resistance pmos transistor same thing this is a symbol of your uh, pmos transistor where this is a gate this is a source this is a drain where voltage control resistance decreases this vgs decreases as the rds decreases this is a rda decreases this concept we require to design it to input cmos nor gate nand gate and the cmos inverter okay so this is called cmos inverter our aim is that to design a cmos inverter by using the uh, pmos and nmos so normally to design a cmos inverter i will connect two transistor that is called a pmos transistor and the uh, nmos transistor in a series okay so basically in this case if we are going to look here this is called a p trans pmos transistor and this is called a nmos transistor which are connected in a series to generate the cmos inverter okay so this is a symbol of your inverter as per this case inverter means what zero it can be able to produce output one if it is one it can be able to produce output zero okay simple operation of the particular circuits when input is equal to zero zero that means when input is equal to zero zero so q1 that is called nmos transistor will be off state and q2 will be in the on state so whatever the voltage you are applying here that can be able to directly show the output is equal to one that is vcc so this is zero output is one when you are applying here five holes here five holes so at that condition your q1 that means q1 will be in the on state and q2 will be in the off state so no current or no voltage it, it can be able to obtain at this point so when it is high output output will be zero this is nothing but a cmos inverter same thing this is simple operation as compared to cmos inverter okay this is only the operation of cmos inverter then how to design two input cmos nand gate that means suppose i want to design 74 sc sc means what high speed c mod 00 ic okay out of that what is the name of this ic this is called cot two input nand gate out of this four input nand gate i want to design one in one gate one gate of two inputs of the particular ic so use two transistor in input stage okay so this is called two input cmos nand gate as i said earlier the construction of the nand uh, cmos can be obtained by using the pmos or nmos okay so in this case this two transistor that is called this is a p1 q2 and q1 this is nothing but the pmos transistor which are connected in the particular parallel one while q1 and q3 are nothing but the nmos transistor which are connected in series and this is called parallel series combination of the particular pmos and the nmos transistor i want to design only two inputs so i will apply only two uh, pmos and two nmos with the input of a and input of b that's why it's called two input cmos nand gate cmos nand gate so when it is zero this is zero so as per this case q1 so q1 become off q2 becomes on then q3 becomes off and q4 become on so that it can be able to produce a output is equal to 1 because you are applying this is zero this is zero so output becomes one as per the application or the concept of your pmos transistor and the nmos transistor that i already defined which is equal to cmos inverter 
Now suppose both the inputs are one. This is one and this is one. So your Q1, that means this Q1 will be on, Q2 will be off, Q2 will be off, then Q3 will be on condition and Q4 will be in the off condition so that it can be able to produce output zero. So this is nothing but two input CMOS NAND gate. So this is the symbol of the two input CMOS NAND gate. So this is called CMOS NAND gate. Operation is given, every conditions. Okay, these are the four different conditions 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. Now, how to design two input CMOS NOR gate? Okay, because NOR gate and NOR gate, NAND gate are, are opposite to each other. So, in this case, to design a two input CMOS NOR gate, I will perform total reverse operation as compared to the NAND gate. In this case, Q2 and Q4 is nothing but a PMOS transistor. These two transistors are connected in series, while in case of your uh, uh, this Q1 and Q3, this is nothing but NMOS transistor, these are connected in parallel. For designing your NAND gate, these two transistors were in parallel and these two transistors were in series. Okay, but for your CMOS NOR gate, this is in series, PMOS transistor are connected in series and these two NMOS transistors are connected in parallel. So this is called parallel series combination, while in, in the previous case that was parallel parallel series combination while in this case this is called series parallel combination so series parallel combination is applicable for cmos nor gate while parallel serial combination is applicable for nand gate okay this is again same thing i require two input nor gate so this is called two input nor gate so i will apply two inputs as per this case this is the output of the particular circuits if you are going to consider first condition this is called zero this is called zero so when a and b are zero zero so q1 that means this is q1 become off state q2 becomes q2 becomes on state q3 becomes your off state q4 becomes on state so this is on this is on you are applying this is zero this is zero suppose you are applying vdd is equal to five volts so that can directly produce a five volts here so zero zero five volts is equal to one okay now if you are going to consider last condition suppose this is one and this is one so at that condition q1 q1 becomes on condition q2 becomes off condition then Q3 becomes your on condition and this is again your off condition. So no current start to flow across this condition when the inputs are one one. So no VDD or no output voltage will be produced here. So output will be here zero. So this is nothing but the your NOR gate. This is how to design three inputs. Instead of using three inputs, again the concept will be the same. This is called three input CMOS NOR gate. At that condition, these three transistors that is called PMOS transistor are connected in parallel and these three transistors are connected in series. Okay, so this is nothing but three input CMOS NOR gate. So this is parallel series combination. Your operation will be remain same as compared to your previous one. This is called symbol of your three input NAND gate. NAND gate. Okay. So in your syllabus, it is only the introduction to ECL that is called emitter couple logic family. So in the first video, we already defined ECL means what emitter couple logic family, which is a part of your non-saturated logic family. Non-saturated logic family means what the transistor never goes into the, into the saturation, it is a part of your uh, TTL. So where in case of ECL, your uh, propagation delay is less than one nanosecond is possible. And due to this property, ECL is the fastest logic family as compared to TTL and the CMOS. This is your third logic family, I will say. So ECL is the fastest logic family because the propagation delay is less than one nanosecond is obtained due to some construction of the particular ECL gate. Okay. So I will not go in detail regarding this. I will just go to the symbol because in your syllabus it is only mentioned introduction to ECL. So this is how to design as compared to this one. I will not go in detail. Okay, so this is very important. That means this is called two input ECL NOR gate or our NOR gate. So basically, as it says, as compared to this one, so this is called this ECL gate has a two input and two output. Okay, now these outputs are always complement, these two outputs are always complementary to each other. That's why it is called two input OR and NOR gate. Okay, that means this gate can be able to perform OR as well as NOR depending upon the conditions. So these two outputs are always complemented to each other. So this is the thing about two input ECL or or NOR gate. But you should always keep in mind ECL means what emitter couple logic family, which is the fastest logic family where the, where due to some construction of the particular circuits, I will not go in detail here. 
the transistor never goes into the saturation where the propagation delay less than one nanosecond is possible. Okay, that's why it is called e uh, fastest logic. Okay, interfacing. This is a very important uh, concept of your logic family. The last point of the particular logic family that is called interfacing. What is meant by interfacing? Normally, as per the definition of your interfacing, that means output of one circuit is connected to the input of next circuit. That is nothing but the interfacing. Then why in case of logical family interfacing is required? Okay, the reason is that in case of uh, for, uh, in case of standard TTL and standard CMOS, we already defined standard TTL, it is the fastest one. Standard CMOS, the major limitation is the thing with the speed of operation. While in case of standard uh, TTL, major limitation is the thing with the power dissipation. While in case of standard CMOS, standard CMOS, your major advantage is the thing with the very less power dissipation. So TTL has a major advantage at the same time major limitation. At the same time, CMOS has a major limitation while the major advantage in terms of your power dissipation. So to compromise or to make the compact device, okay, we can able to make the interfacing. Interfacing is what output of one circuit is connected to the input of second circuit to design a new product. Okay, so, so, so uh, to design to compensate this drawback, which is often in case of TTL and the CMOS, they are going to interface the TTL and CMOS or CMOS to TTL. That means TTL gate can drive the CMOS or CMOS gate can drive the C, uh, TTL IC. Apart from that case, normally, suppose I have one C, TTL IC and second is called the CMOS IC. I cannot directly connect the particular uh, TTL gate to the output of input of your CMOS gate. Because TTL gate, your operating voltage, your current voltage parameter, your fan in, your fan out, your power dissipation, your propagation delay, figure of merit, all these electrical parameters are totally different. Same thing will be happen with respect to the uh, CMOS. Your operating voltage is always vary from 3 to 15 volts. Current and voltage parameters are different. Your propagation delay is different. Power dissipation is different. Figure of merit is different. So due to the mismatching of these electrical characteristics of TTL, standard TTL and standard CMOS, I cannot directly connect TTL IC to the particular CMOS, CMOS IC. Meaning that, suppose I want to connect the output of 74SC00 to the input of 74LS00. 74 that means I will connect output of CMOS gate to the input of mm, TTL gate. Okay, so these two devices have different electrical characteristics because voltage and current parameters are different for the different devices. So I want to maintain this voltage and current parameter at the same level. Okay, that's why I require some interfacing circuit between the TTL to CMOS or CMOS to TTL. So whenever I want to drive TTL gate to the CMOS gate, whenever I want to connect TTL gate to the input of CMOS gate, I will connect one interfacing circuit which will maintain the voltage level and the current level at the same level. Okay, that will I will call as TTL gate can drive the CMOS gate. Otherwise, CMOS gate can drive the TTL gate. So this is nothing but the interfacing. Okay. The simplest and the most desirable interface circuit between the driver and the load is the direct connections. So often direct connection cannot be possible due to the difference in the electrical characteristic. As I said earlier, because the voltage characteristics and the current characteristics parameter of TTL and CMOS are different. So I cannot directly connect TTL gate to the CMOS gate or CMOS gate to the particular TTL gate. Okay. I will connect one interfacing circuit between these two TTL and CMOS. An interface circuit is connected between the driver and the load circuit. The condition to the driver output signal is to be compatible with the requirement of the particular load circuit. Okay, we will discuss. Okay, look here. This is called driver gate. Suppose this is called TTL, this is called your CMOS. So this is nothing but the interfacing circuit which will maintain the current and the voltage parameter of TTL and CMOS if same level. For example, suppose this is called TTL. I will call this is a TTL. For TTL, your output voltage is vary from 0 to, it is called 0 to 5.25. Okay, suppose this is called operating voltage is called 0 0.5 volts. While in this case, this is vary from 3 to 15 volts. This is called 3 to 15 volts. Okay, so this interfacing circuit will maintain the voltage level approximately equal to 0 to 5 volts because this operating voltage is uh, CMOS is different. High, high the values of the particular condition. So no interface is required, direct connection. Assume the current loading is acceptable. Okay. 
So again, this is the driver circuit. This is the load circuit. We are applying some interface circuit between the voltage and the current parameter. So that um, interfacing with respect to this case, this voltage and current parameter plays very, very important role. So I will maintain this voltage at the same level, current at the same level, whenever I want to drive the particular gates, TTL to CMOS or CMOS to TTL. So these are already defined for different values of current parameter because if you are going to look here for standard CMOS and standard TTL, these are the current parameter. One microampere, one microampere, 0.4 milliampere, 0.4 milliampere. For that case, these are the different one. Again, for the SCT, this is different one. For this is LS, this is different one. So due to this mismatching of this in current and voltage parameter, one driver circuit is required between the TTL and the CMOS, which will maintain the this parameter at the same level. So how to maintain? How to drive the TTL gate to the particular CMOS gate? Okay, very important. Mostly as for six mark in every year in your theory, how to um, uh, perform TTL? How your TTL gate can drive the CMOS gate? Okay, so this is TTL gate. As I said earlier, this has a very different current parameter. But the operating voltage of this one is nothing but zero to five volts. Okay, and this is nothing but a CMOS. Again, this CMOS has a different current parameter. But the operating voltage of this CMOS is nothing but a three to fifteen volts. This is 0 to 5 volts, this is 3 to 15 volts. I'm talking with this to standard detail. So this is nothing but the interfacing circuits. Okay, so this is called external pull-up register of 10K. Due to this external pull-up register, so voltage level is very less because TTL is voltage level is 0 to 5. This is called 3 to 15. So due to external pull-up register, which will increase this voltage level approximately equal to 3 to 15 volts. So that I can able to drive the TTL gate to the particular CMOS gate. Okay, so that I will drive the TTL gate to the particular CMOS gate. So this is nothing but the interfacing of TTL to the particular CMOS. So this is nothing but the external pull-up register or otherwise I will call interfacing circuit, which will increase the voltage level of TTL to the approximately equal to the CMOS. So this so that it can be a TTL gate can drive the CMOS gate. Same thing. This is with respect to the internal circuit of the particular trans TTL and the CMOS in terms of current parameter. A voltage shifting because driver and the load operate in a different voltage supply require the voltage level trans translator interface circuit. That is called the voltage level translator circuit. This is called voltage level translator circuit or otherwise called interface circuit. The simplest way to accomplish this with the buffer that has an open drain with a pull up register. Okay. Another solution is a dual power supply level translator circuit using the two different supply voltage, one each for the input and output translating between the two levels. Same thing, this is a driver gate, this is a load gate. Now this is called your transit TTL, this is called CMOS, and this is the limit of interfacing circuits. This is again voltage translator. This voltage translator will all, uh, increase the voltage or decrease the voltage depending upon in case of whenever TTL gate can drive the CMOS gate this will be increase the voltage whenever CMOS gate drives the TTL gate it will be decrease the voltage that's why it's called voltage level translator same thing voltage level translator okay so <laughs> in this case whenever I want to connect TTL gate can drive the CMOS gate I will apply voltage external pull-up register which will increase the voltage of TTL to the particular CMOS. Whenever CMOS gate can drive the TTL gate, I will apply voltage or pull-down register which will decrease the output voltage of CMOS to the particular inequivalent to the particular TTL gate. Okay, so this is nothing but the interfacing. That's why it's called interfacing of TTL and CMOS. Okay, so in this case the major um, question will be asked what is meant by interfacing, why it is required. The reason is that because this TTL and CMOS has different electrical and the voltage, voltage current and voltage parameter. So I cannot directly connect the output of TTL to the particular CMOS or the output of CMOS to directly connect to the TTL because voltage and current parameters are totally different. So to make this possible, I will connect one interface circuit between driver and the load circuit, which will maintain the electrical characteristics of voltage and current at a same level. Okay. So this is about your TTL and CMOS that is called interfacing and this is the end of your unit, uh, unit number one that is called study of different types of logical families. Okay, so in this case we already defined different types of TTL 
TTL logic family, CMOS logic family, how to design to input TTL NAND gate, how to design to input CMOS NOR gate, to input CMOS NAND gate, what are different parameters that is called fan in, fan out, voltage and current parameter, figure of merit, noise margin, then propagation delay, operating temperature, then short key transistor, which plays very, very important role. And last one we already defined that is called the interfacing. What is exactly meaning of your interfacing and how to perform the T how can TTL gate can drive the CMOS gate and how CMOS gate can drive the TTL gates. Okay, so this is the end of your unit number one that is called study of different types of logical families. Okay, thank you. We will stop here.